Hey superstars, it is time again for my monthly recap. Today I've got a big sappy video response for Baseball Collector, one for Sammy Thunder, and a late one for Tony Black. I've got a little mail from some really righteous dudes and I did a little shopping. And uh, before I forget, I did a live stream with James from Elite Hunters on his channel this week where we came up with baseball lineups using players who have played for both the Indians and his team, the Yankees. It was a ton of fun, so be sure to check that one out if you haven't already. All right, as many of you have heard, Baseball Collector is at 5,000 subs, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, congrats, Mike. That is really, really awesome. So he wants to know what the YouTube community means to you, how it has changed your collecting, and who has influenced your collecting. So let's back up a little bit. Um, I started my channel right about the same time I started collecting sports cards again, and that was a little over three years ago, but I really had no intention of making a sports card channel. Um, I was initially inspired by makers like Jimmy DeResta and I like to make stuff and I intended to do a drawing or an art piece or a project every day. I did a lot of experimenting with both the channel and my collecting, which was reignited after I saw a complete T206 set in an art museum. As far as that goes, when you want to learn more about something, so you go to YouTube, right? And like everybody else, when I was first looking into baseball card channels, I was watching Jabs and Baseball Card Junkies TV and Dead Guy Cardboard because I was initially uh, just interested in the T206 cards and Baseball Collector. Uh, before anything else, though, YouTube opened the doors to many, many, many different and interesting ways that uh, I could be collecting. And uh, TTMing, which had nothing to do with any of those guys I just mentioned, I know, but uh, that interested me a little bit. And I had the idea to mix TTMing and drawing, and I filmed a couple videos where I doodled baseball players and I sent the drawings to them. And then I noticed a few people thought that these were my most interesting videos. So I just mixed my chocolate and my peanut butter and I ended up with a sports art YouTube channel. My chocolate is in my peanut butter. It, it's doggone good. I don't think I really answered the questions just yet though, but uh, I think what I'm getting at is that this community was so welcoming and supportive and amazing that I just kind of fell in love with it. Perhaps if I had not gone down the sports card route and maybe just focused on teaching people how to draw or doing trendy pop culture stuff like drawing Baby Yodas or Will Smith slap fights, I'd have millions of subs and I'd be making viral TikTok videos and I'd have a lucrative Audible sponsorship and I'd be driving a Ferrari. And that kind of stuff. But I gave all that up just to hang out with you nerds. <laughs> Uh, I've made a lot of really good friends here, amazing people with amazingly big hearts, and they're just super supportive, whether I'm talking about my art or my cards or whatever. So like everybody else, I really enjoy the interaction and the friendships and the camaraderie. Now, I am kind of on an island because my channel doesn't really focus on sports cards, and maybe not all of the community is that interested in watching me draw stuff, and I totally get that. I rarely watch a video about hockey cards, even if I really like you, so that kind of makes it even more special for me that, uh, that I've been as successful as I have been, but it is also really important to me that I am adding something different, and I know a lot of you really appreciate that, and it is uh, sort of, it is my gift, it is my curse sort of thing, you know? Now, who influences me? Um, as far as videos, I told you where I came from. I grab inspiration from lots of places and lots of people, both in and out of the sports card community. But uh, who influences my collecting? And I'm not talking about TTMing. I love TTMing and TTM channels, but I'm kind of just touching on the stuff that I buy from my PC. Really, anybody who reminds me that it is okay to collect how I want to collect. Um, I collect one team and that is it. And it's not even a popular team. And so many of you are just like, that is awesome. So I, as I've gotten a hang of what I'm doing over the past couple of years, Project Focus has been a big, big part of my collecting. So Mike certainly influences my focus with his Hall of Fame projects. Uh, we may have different projects, but we seem to go about them in the same way. Um, similarly, Jake at Legends Never Die, definitely Alex at Bowman 53, uh, talk about focus. Um, Nina S, not only do we collect the same team, we read all the same books and we love vintage, but her thirst for knowledge is super inspiring. Uh, Don's Field of Dreams, uh, Diamond Yard Sports Cards, Ken's Cardboard, uh, Sean Tiefer, Dustin and Blake, Flying Dutchman Cards, they all have pretty cool focus collections and I'm sure I'm leaving out a ton of people.
And this isn't to say that I don't like you or your channels if you don't collect with focus. Uh, Four Leaf knows he's one of my favorite people in this world and he has zero focus whatsoever. And that's awesome. It totally works for him. So yeah, there you go, Mike. I hope that was what you're looking for. Big, big congratulations to you, buddy. And I just want to thank you for being so supportive of me over these past few years. Uh, when I get my million subs and my Ferrari, I'll stop by and I'll give you a ride sometime. That's enough of my face. Let's look at some cards. Sammy Thunder is celebrating 400 subs and he wants to see your favorite vintage cards in the sports that you collect. Since I only really collect baseball, I decided to do one from each decade. So from the 10s, here's my T206 Addy Joss portrait. From the 20s, I got Tris Speaker. My favorite 30s card is this Diamond Stars Earl Averill. My favorite 40s card is my Leaf Lou Boudreaux rookie. From the 50s, and this was the toughest to choose, but I'm going to go with my 53 Bowman Feller, and I'm sure this is one that I'll change my mind on. I cheated on the 60s, and I went with my autographed 1959 Destruction Crew, and for the 70s, here's a Dennis Eckersley rookie. I do have just a few football cards, so my favorite vintage cards are this 54 Otto Graham and this 1964 Jim Brown. So congrats, Sammy. Keep it up, sir. Oh man, we're back to my face again. I am sorry. Um, I'm really late to the party on this one, but I felt bad about not making a response for Tony Black's three-year anniversary thing. He wanted to know what we do with 24 hours with the Stanley Cup, who is the nicest sports star you've ever met, and who is the biggest Richard. Now, my dad's name is Richard, and I don't want to offend all the Richards out there, so I'll just say who is the biggest jerk. Um, since I don't have any interest in hockey, I would pass the Stanley Cup on to someone who would appreciate it. No sense in me having it, right? Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting lots of cool sports stars. Uh, Doc Gooden was one of the first and still one of the best. He was just really super thrilled with my art and, uh, super Joe Charbonneau. He was so fun to work with. Really, really fun guy, super talkative and super friendly. Uh, fortunately I haven't met anyone yet. That's been a downright jerk. The worst I get at a signing is just someone that's not really engaged, you know? Uh, Carlos Santana comes to mind. He ignored me when I asked him to use a blue Sharpie and it seemed rather indifferent. And I asked him if he wanted a copy of his print and he just said, curtly said no. So it could be worse though. He could have told me he was going to do a video response for me and then just completely missed a deadline. So sorry, Tony, congrats on three years, buddy. If I was smart, I would have moved the VRs around and I'd have a better segue into this contest win from Sammy Thunder. He does a weekly vintage giveaway, and all you got to do is leave a comment response to that week's prompt. I won this 1980 Pete Rose, so thanks, Sammy. It's very cool, sir. Don't Talk to Robots and Flying Dutchman cards held their second annual Pack-a-Palooza recently, and it was a splendid seven hours or whatever of live stream. Here's what I won from Doug at Don't Talk to Robots. Uh, classic little sticker. I already have two of Doug's fancy hologram stickers, so he didn't need to send me another one. It says, yo, Scott, thanks for being a part of Pack-a-Palooza 2. That was a ton of fun. Here are your winnings and some Indians cards I've gotten in breaks. Keep on rocking, Doug. This was open on the live stream. Uh, it's the head of marketing, Brett Saberhagen. I should TTM that. I forgot about these. Here's a Casey Mize rookie, Kristen Pache, Camo, Royce Lewis thingy, uh, Frank Thomas. And here's some tops big, 92 Leaf Series 1 and 2. I think I'll save those for some TTMs. But I will open this Donruss pop-up deal. We got uh, Murph, Frank White, and uh, Whitey. What else we got? Ooh, some Alvaro magic on the back there. We got uh, Biebs, Frankie, Tommy, name variation. That's neat. Uh, Plesak, Hosey. I needed this Jimenez rookie. There's a Jimenez rated rookie. Lou and the man, the myth, the legend, Alvaro. Thanks, Doug. Good stuff, man. Work had been slow for a few months, so I didn't have much of a card budget for a while, so I've been spending a lot of time sorting and cataloging stuff this year, and I wanted to get spines done for these binders. These are my Topps flagship binders, one for each decade on the spine. I have a jersey from each decade and the appropriate Topps logo. I thought that came out pretty neat. On the fronts, I would like to put a scorecard from each decade in there, but uh, I don't have all those yet. 
I have bigger binders that hold the entirety of other brands. This one's all Bowman. And this one is Archives, Heritage, and Stadium Club. And I have another for Donruss stuff, one for Score, one for Upper Deck, and one more for Fleer. But the focus right now is getting the Tops binders completed. I am making pretty decent progress on those too. My LCS Triple Play Vintage asked me to design a repack wax wrapper. Uh, Terry, who runs the place, wants to make packs of 12 with all Hall of Famers and some of them even vintage, so there's the wrapper. Uh, right now he's got these at six bucks, which is pretty good, I think. That's 50 cents a card, so let's open these guys up. I bought two packs right out of the box. These weren't prepared special for me at all. Uh, Terry wasn't even around when I bought them, so there's no funny business here. Ooh, right on top, a 1967 Tony Oliva. Very neat. Uh, Carlton, Kirby, Reggie. First pack was pretty fun. Here's the second pack. We got an 80 Lou Brock and Yaz. There's a 73 Leo de Rocher. Not as cool as the Oliva, but uh, good enough for the girls I go out with. Uh, 83 Fisk, and those guys. Not too bad. I know he's trying to figure out the labor of packing the packs. It's not super easy, but I like where these are going. Early in the month, Nina S. came out and hung out for a little bit with me at Triple Play Vintage. That day, I found a miscut Don Mossy rookie for a buck, and that's an all-day-long and twice-on-Sunday kind of purchase. Um, from the eBay, I picked up an autographed Bowman Don Mossy rookie, which is a short print and a lot harder to find a good deal on, so I was super happy to add that. And the last weekend was the Strongsville Show, which is a pretty nice vintage show near Cleveland. I met up with Don from Don's Field of Dreams and Dean from Dean Gerhardt. Yeah, I collect it all, which is one of my favorite YouTube names. We hung out and we had a very nice lunch, so that was a lot of fun. I picked up this original drawing of Early Wind for 10 bucks. He looked lonely, so I had to bring him home. Uh, not a bad drawing at all, though. I've been in the market for an Oral Hershiser autograph for my Indians World Series team's autograph project. They're not hard to find, but they can be a little pricey, so I was thrilled to pay 20 bucks for this ball. I've been really wanting a PSA 6-7 Red Heart Al Rosen, but that's not so easy to find. I struck a nice deal for these two raw ones. These would probably be in the 3-5 to five range, so the hunt's not over, but they should tide me over for a little bit. It's just a super cool card. And one of my hobby goals for the year was to pick up a Mars Attacks card, and wham! This guy had some graded and ungraded, but there wasn't much of a price difference, and they were all fairly reasonable. So I picked out these three, and I'm pretty stoked about those. I'm not sure if I'm going to try to do the whole set. It's pretty pricey, but it would be really neat. Congrats to Mike, Sammy, and Tony. Thanks, Sammy, and thanks, Doug, at Don't Talk to Robots. And thanks to Nina and Don and Dean for reaching out and hanging out with me. Uh, that's all. I'm pretty tired of yapping, and I'm sure you're tired of watching. Uh, I'm trying to come up with a new sign-off. I've grown tired of the like, comment, subscribe, yada, yada, yada thing, but I've got nothing good yet. So for now, so long, adieu, auf Wiedersehen, goodbye.